All right, hey Betty, it is time for Cowboys Medals live stream. Rob Keynes here with Gold Silver Pros. We are going to let the room load before we get too far into the presentation. Let everybody join in to the program. Thanks for joining the live stream. Thanks for joining us on Cowboy Medals. This is the June 27th edition. It's gonna we're going to talk about Basel III and we're going to talk about central bank digital currencies. We'll get into the details here in a moment while we're waiting on the stream to load. Good to see everybody here. Thank you for joining. Looks like we have a good amount of people here. Welcome, Michael. Welcome, Gary Granato, Mike Mickelson, Silver Eagle. Kristen Rowe is here. Ross Martindale, Joanna C. Anthony Verde. Who else do we have? Martin Mickelson. Welcome everybody to the program. Welcome Howdy into the program. Thanks everybody for joining. Today we're going to be talking about Basel III because a lot of the Basel III rules come into effect starting this week. So it's a good time to talk about it. And uh, we're going to get into how that plays into the rise of the central bank digital currencies while the stream loads. We'll give it here just a moment. Uh, I also want to talk about our sponsor, so we'll go ahead and do that now. We do have a sponsor for this program. And we're thankful for our sponsors because they make the program possible and all of the production that we do in the background possible. So today's sponsor is Portofino Resources. They are traded on the TSX Venture Stock Exchange under POR, under the Frankfurt at POTA, and on the OTCQB here in the U.S. at PFFOF. They're a company that we previewed in our spring edition or the quarterly newsletter, and we've been talking about them now for a couple of months. They have a gold project, but they also have a lithium project, and I want to do an update on their lithium project. They have put into place a geological crew to the Allison Lake North Lithium property. Now, their lithium property is potentially very big. It's in a very well-established district, has a lot of land and a lot of potential, and lithium is becoming absolutely critical to the world that we live in. It's used in battery technology, uh, electric vehicles, and so lithium, very near term, probably for the next five to 10 years, is going to play a huge role, if not even after that. So uh, according to the CEO, David Toffel, he says, Securing strategic national supplies of critical metals such as lithium and rare elements is being prioritized by Canadian U.S. governments, and that is true. The Allison Lake region has been identified by the Ontario Geological Survey as important new exploration target area for lithium and rare element mineralization, and we're excited to have boots on the ground and our exploration program underway. This is critically important because not only lithium but rare earth metals, and 92% of the rare earth, rare earth metals are dominated by China, which either owns the mines and or the processing. So it is critically important that we develop rare earths and also lithium going forward. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm happy to have Portofino sponsoring our program. Thank you everybody again for joining the program. Uh, thanks Rob, SO15, Jim Blanchard is here, Carl Warpy is here, Daniela is here on the program watching us on Sunday. Thank you everybody for joining. We'll go ahead and get started on the program. Today's topic is Basel III and the rise of the central bank digital currencies. And I just got this tingling feeling today when I was deciding what I wanted to do the video on. Uh, I was going through the news and just had sort of one of those surreal experiences where you kind of step outside of yourself for a second and you're, you're kind of looking at the world in a, in a different place. And it doesn't happen very often, but it was just this weird feeling of something very big had happened. And I just felt as though I had to do... Um, the, the presentation today on Basel III and on the central bank digital currencies. I'm gonna show you where a lot of my predictions going back to 2009, 2010 have started to come true. We're gonna show you that. And then I'm gonna get into why I think Basel III and the central bank digital currencies are linked and what I think it all means. We've been talking about this a lot lately on the program, but I really wanted to get more in depth uh, into I think what the long-term effects are than we had been. And again, this is just something I had to do. I'm going to share a screen. We're going to do our week in review first before I get into the program. So I'm changing the program format around a little bit to see what works best. I wanted to take you guys through what we've done the last week. So we had Keith Newmeyer on a Monday talking about uh, his uh, new company, First Mining Gold, and also talking about why the retail, retail PM buyer is scaring the big banks. If you haven't watched that video, I highly encourage you to do so. Keith Newmeyer tells it like it is. He thinks that the retail trade is having a big effect on the banks. And I think that does play into Basel III as well because it's causing shortages, especially in the retail markets, when the, the banks and the financial elite are trying to realign the monetary system around the precious metals and then launching the central bank digital currencies. 
so this is a really critical conversation that we had earlier this week. I'd highly encourage you guys to go take a look. Then we had the Perth Mint CEO provides confusing response. So the Perth Mint CEO, Richard Hayes, had gone on to Kitco, totally uh, confused everybody by confusing liabilities and assets. And I think basically whether intentionally or unintentionally, confusing the issue on Perth Mint. Daniel Bagario, the CFA, who did the original analysis on why he'd think Perth Mint is running fractional reserve gold system came out of the program. And we basically took five of the main points that Richard had made on Kitco and gave our thoughts on it. That, that's a critical video for understanding what's going on at the Perth Mint. And I think it's also critical to understanding what's going on in Basel too, because I think what we figured out in the Perth Mint is they're leasing gold out from the Perth Mint for either an exchange or a bullion bank to provide this liquidity uh, to the market, specifically to the central banks and the big players as the reset is happening and to help facilitate what we're moving into in Basel III. So I think the Perth Mint, Basel III, the central bank digital currencies all come together under the same umbrella of what is going on the Great Reset. Then Friday night, we had Chris Marchese on the program to talk about uh, stocks, but also because he does a lot of mining stock reviews. So uh, he does great research on that. We also talk about inflation, why inflation is not transitory. And this is a hugely important conversation as to why we're going to need the Great Reset and in what uh, step of the Great Reset we're in. We've seen what we think is going to be persistently high inflation come to stay here in 2021, and it's going to continue for several years and how that's going to affect the economy. Chris and I talk about that quite a bit. Okay, that is the week in review. Now I'm going to talk about um, some of the previous work I had done on Basel III and the Great Reset. So if you go to Gold, Silver Pros and you go to the Learn and you go to the, the University, you have to be a, a paid subscriber to the website to get this, except for everybody can view this first one. 1.1, if you go to the university, everybody can view this video, key concepts you can use. It's totally free. I put that out there on purpose and it gets you into the university and gives you a, flight, uh, a taste and a flavor of what we're gonna do. But relative to what we're talking about today, I had done three pieces. The uh, first one is 1.6 money wars, crypto versus gold versus cash. Then I'd done modern monetary theory, negative interest rates in crypto. And then I'd done the IMF plan for world digital currencies. All of these took place around the 2018 to 2020 timeframe when I wrote those or did the videos for those. And so they're in the university. Uh, if you wanna understand what we're talking about today on a deeper level, I would suggest going to university. I really get into the weeds in it and bring forth all the documentation on it that I can't do on this program. This is a, a longer format version of what we do on the show. And because there's so much research, I do put it into the paid university for people willing to study it. And I totally think it's worth it. I think what you pay for our university courses, what you'll pay for regular university courses, I think is a fraction of and teaches you a lot of things that they won't. Also want to uh, talk to you about becoming a subscriber. You can click here and become a subscriber if you wish on the website, or you can click on newsletter and get the free newsletter link anytime that you want. But I wanted to take you down to some of the research we've done. If you go down to the bottom of the footer and click on research, we're going to talk about some of the predictions that I've had regarding uh, the reset and what's going on. So if you scroll down past the precious metals prices on the website, you get into confirmed forecasts and forecasts in progress and pending. So one of the ones I want to talk about here is number 11. I made this prediction in my book. I wrote it in 2009 and posted it in 2010. Those of you who read the book can attest to this. I said, China's preparing an alternative currency to the US dollar. And a lot of people thought I was absolutely nuts for saying that. This is 11 years ago. People like China doesn't want to be a competing currency. They don't want to be the world reserve currency. But what I saw was what they were doing with gold, what they were doing with materials and supplies, what they were doing in rebuilding their economy, the precursor to the Belt and Road Initiative. You could see that in 2009, 2010. And I knew China was about to emerge as a major player on the stage. And fast forward to now, and I think China is planning to have a competitor to the US dollar. We'll get into that in the next couple of articles that I'm about to talk about. Another forecast that we'll be talking about today is one that's in progress and pending. I made that for my subscribers in 2019, and that's called The World Moves to Cashless Society. And that was through the dissolution of cash in the implementation of central bank digital currencies. Again, made this over two years ago. It is now coming to fruition. For those of you that follow me on my on the subscriber side of the website, that go, go ahead and, and pay for that, you're going to get these forecasts before anybody else. And I've been really good at it. I've had, let's see how many. Since 2010, I've had 32 confirm uh, forecast. And I think all of these are either in the process of coming true, the last eight, or will come true after or be a consequence of the global reset. So if you want access to the articles underpinning these, uh, become a subscriber on the website. All right, now getting into it. Here is something from Reuters. 
about central bank digital currencies get full BIS backing. Now, I've been warning you that the BIS, the IMF, and the 50 central banks were planning this. A lot of people are like, no, Rob, I don't, I don't believe you're correct. I provided support back then, but now they're coming out blatantly and saying it. So here's an article by Reuters, central bank digital currencies get full BIS backing. And it says the Bank for International Settlements has given its full backing to the development of central bank digital currencies, saying they are needed to monetize, mo I'm sorry, modernize finance and to ensure big tech does not take control of money. Okay, pay attention to what they're saying. This is where the central banks, and I've said this before, are going to battle the private cryptos. They're blaming big tech for putting out the private cryptos, and now they're starting to ostracize them. I said this would happen, and none of the Bitcoin followers, they derided me for this over and over again. No, Rob, it's not true. Bitcoin and all these other ones, you know, they, they, they can't do anything. The genie's out of the bottle. They can't stop them. Well, look at what they're doing. They're aligning the central bank digital currencies against big tech and the private cryptos. And if you've been, you, this narrative has been coming out the last few weeks, and it's exactly what I've said for the last two and a half, three years. Dub the central bank the world central banks. The BIS, which is coordinating many of their discussions on digital currencies, set out recommendations on Wednesday on how a central bank digital currency such as a digital dollar, euro, yen, or yuan should look. As part of its upcoming annual report, estimated that at least 56 central banks and monetary authorities representing around a fifth of the world's population are now looking at digital currencies. What did I say two years ago? 50 central banks are looking at it. What does it say here? 56. Okay, you guys listen to what I say. I do a lot of research and what I say generally comes true because I listen to these guys and what they say and I just get to it before other people and I put the pieces together. The train has left the station, said Benoit Kia of the BIS, referring to the move towards central bank digital currencies and its support. It's not that we are getting carried away. We're just looking around. The push comes as physical cash falls globally. Why is physical cash falling globally? Well, you had that pandemic where Oh no, it's bad to have physical cash. And you had the destruction of the middle class across a lot of the world the last 20, 30 years. So people are now having to, to turn to credit using their credit cards and now getting to digital currencies to try to make ends meet. So they're speculating in Bitcoin, for example. So all, the authorities look to fend off the threat of their money printing powers from Bitcoin and efforts from big tech, such as Facebook backed DM. Again, they're pitting the central bank digital currencies against the private cryptos. I said over and over this would happen. They're going to alienate them. Remember back to the conversation that I had. Let's go back to when I had this conversation with Kurt, uh, the chief historian at CoinGeek. And one of the last questions I asked him in this interview right here is I said, the central banks and, you know, and the monetary authorities around the world together with the congressional authorities can outlaw Bitcoin. And he says it's a big concern, but he didn't think it would happen. He thought, well, we need to get the central banks on board and make them miners. And it was this Pollyanna view of what the Bitcoin could do. It's going to revolutionize the way the central banks thought. That's not what's happening. They're pitting the central bank digital currencies against Bitcoin, like I said they would, and like I told Kurt, and he didn't believe me. A lot of Bitcoin faithful don't believe me, but that's exactly what's happening. Okay, that's what's happening. Without CBDCs, digital money would become increasingly dominated by big tech firms, Kura warned, as they would leverage enormous social media user bases. They're afraid of Bitcoin and they're going to face off and try to get rid of it. That's a place you don't want to be where governments don't want to be, Kura said, describing it as a loss of control of sovereign money. What have I been saying? They're not going to allow the private digital currencies to exist. And here they're blatantly coming out and saying this is what their fear is. So if you click on this little graphic, you get the research and development on central bank digital currencies as has been going on. And you can see this has exploded since 2016. This is what I've been seeing and why I've been warning you guys. If you're getting into Bitcoin and the other currencies, they're going to fight them. They're going to take that technology. They're going to implement it at the central bank level. And then they're going to go to these Congresses and they're going to say outlaw the digital currencies and put a stop to them. I've told you over and over it's happening. And it's right here in black and white, in plain English, on Reuters, a mainstream financial outlet, were you listening to me two years ago when I told you this? Some countries are already well down the track. The Bahamas became the first to launch a general purpose CBDC known as a sand dollar in October. China has a number of ongoing trials in Switzerland and the Bank of France have announced Europe's first cross-border experiment. Hello. So his colleague, Hyun Song Shin, said authorities will have to decide whether citizens need digital IDs to use CBDCs or go down a token-based route. In other words, if they give them digital IDs, they can control not only your trade in that currency, in that central bank digital currency, but all of them wait till we get to another story. And the view of the BIS, the ID system is the better way to go. 
because why? Because it offers more control. Most experts think fully functioning digital dollars a year or so, a year or two away, and CBDs is highly political and heating up. So a couple of other articles we can get into here. Let me see if I want to get into it. Yeah, here's the one. China proposes global rules for central bank digital currencies. The rise of China, the rise of central bank digital currencies. This is not a coincidence that the rise of the Chinese economy and their place in the world and them hoarding gold, okay, and the rise of central bank digital currencies. I've been saying this over and over. Were you listening to me? China proposed a set of global rules for central bank digital currencies on Thursday and how they can be used from the world to highly sensitive issues such as monitoring and information sharing. Big brother wants to watch you. That's what that means. You will have no privacy. What have I been saying? It's here in Reuters in black and white. Global central banks are looking at developing digital currencies to modernize their financial systems so they can do modern monetary theory, get rid of debt-based systems and go straight to uh, digital currency and negative interest rates in the banking system. What have I been saying? China is one of the most advanced in this effort and they want to ward off threats from Bitcoin. They're going to fight the private cryptos. Hello. Ma Chengchun, the director general of the PBOC's Digital Currency Institute, laid out the proposals for the Bank of the International Sentiment Seminar. So anybody thinks that the BIS and the AIMF aren't playing ball with China, hello, are you reading this story? China's playing a big part in what is coming. All of the central banks are. Remember, 56, 56, the BIS and the IMF are all together, and it doesn't matter where you're from. It's across the world. Interoperability should be enabled between central bank digital currency systems. That's from China. Okay, this is the big global plan. Uh, systems of different jurisdictions and exchange, he said. The PBOC has shared the proposals with other central banks. Information flow and fund flow should be synchronized. In other words, the spying over what you're buying and the, the flows of the actual money should be synchronized. What have I been saying? You're not going to have privacy when these central bank digital currencies come out. Own some gold and silver. Hello. As digital currencies such as Bitcoin gain more traction with mainstream companies, investors, and private efforts like Facebook-based Diem seek approval, the onus is on central banks to accelerate plans to issue digital cash to fend off threats. It is the corporates and the private cryptos fighting the central banks. What have I been saying? The PBOC is aiming to become the first major central bank to issue a central bank digital currency, part of its push to internationalize the yuan and reduce dependence on the dollar-dominated payment system. The European Central Bank is also exploring the introduction of a digital euro within the next five years. It's running in opposition to Germany, though, where the Bundesbank writes a digital euro can pose risk to banks. So what Germany realizes here is they're going to lose their national sovereignty and the, the sovereignty of their national banking system if they allow this to go through, and they're already fighting it. A CBDC gains wide acceptance in international trade and payments could ultimately roll the dollar status as a de facto currency, and it will kill all fiat currencies, and that's by design. What have I been saying? China said separately it would quicken uh, pilot programs to develop its digital yuan. They're rushing into it. What have I been saying? About the middle of this decade, they're going to start implementing CBDCs. What does it say right here in Reuters? The mouthpiece for the BIS. It's telling you what the plan is. Mu added that a key global rule should be a fair supply of digital currencies by world central banks. A digital currency supplied by one central bank should not impede another, so on and so forth. They're all working together what have I been saying? Okay, getting back to the chat. It looks like here we have a super chat from Dumb Money Media. Thank you so much, Dumb Money Media, for all of your contributions. Remember, guys, if you want to ask me a question, put it into the super chat. I'll answer it. Dumb Money Media says, I used my gains this year from crypto and bought my first 10 out silver bar and got my wife a Monegle chain. Awesome. I love Monet, by the way. Uh, my kids uh, buy uh, Monet gold. If they buy jewelry, uh, have some, some pieces for the family. Uh, I'm a big fan of Manet. I think they have a really, really good product. Uh, good to see that we have about 350 people in the chat room here. This is good for a Sunday. Good to see you all here. This is Cowboy Metals because we broadcast from the, the great state of Texas and we don't take a lot of BS, as you guys know. In addition, it's sort of our European uh, Appreciation Day where we broadcast earlier in the day so our European uh, folks can get in and our UK folks can get in here into the live chat as well and interact with us. Thank you so much, everybody, for being on the program and for being a part of it. All right, we're going to get back to the program. Before we do, I want to remind you, if you if you go down to the description, we have 
a couple of things you can sign up for. You can sign up for our research intelligence team. You just put your name and email information on a Google Doc form. We'll get you integrated into that. We want to take all of your research and put it into that process. A lot of you guys email me. Sometimes I can't catch up with those. We've got somebody, a person on the team monitoring that did that uh, research intelligence team. And we want all your research so we can bring it to you on the program. It really helps us out. Thank you for supporting us that way. We also have a private investment service. If you click on that link in the description, if you're interested in doing investment into certain companies and want to get involved in special opportunities, we're going to open this up for a very limited time to a very limited number of people. You can sign up for that below as well. All right, getting back to the program, we're going to go talk about Basel III. I promised you guys I would, and I would tie this all together. So back to Basel III we go. Here is a nice little article on MarketWatch about why Basel III regulations are poised to shake up the gold market. Now, there's been opinion on either side. I've had guests on the program that said they didn't think it would change much in gold. Some people said it would change a lot. I tend to think it's somewhere in the middle, but I think the bigger issue is how it's the alignment of the system and how it's going to make physical gold more costly and harder to get. And this article at MarketWatch basically says what I have been saying, published by Myra Seifong on June 26, just yesterday, and it's talking about the net stable funding ratio. I'm going to get down here and just go to a certain section. So as we go down here, benefits of an unallocated gold and NSFR impact. I want to read to you some of this, what uh, Myra has written. Unallocated gold provides uh, the most convenient, cheapest, effective way for trades to be done between professional counterparts, rather than having to move fiscal bars against each trade. That is basically the London market, the OTC market, said Ross Norman, Chief Executive Officer at Metals Daily. It is primarily an interbank mechanism to help professional participants with clearing and settlement trades. In other words, it's derivative of actual physical gold. It's not real physical gold all the time. Under the NSFR rules, however, those are the ones pr proposed by Basel III and the BIS, unallocated gold goes into the balance sheet of the banks involved and the rules proposed to make it much more expensive for banks to hold unallocated gold balances. What are they doing here? They're getting rid of some of the derivative trading and getting down to more of a physical gold system and they're weakening the London market at the same time. They're taking the power out of the London market. Remember what we just talked about the central bank digital currencies. All the central banks around the world in this mega system are aligning, at least 56 of them are aligning. And so what they need to do is get the power of gold out of certain centers. Number one being London in order to do that because they're capitalizing their currencies with gold. I'm gonna show you that here in a moment. The rules will not only make the cost of clearing and settling trades more expensive, but the lending of precious metals to industrial counterparts, including miners, refiners, and fabricators will become much more expensive as the costs get pushed down to the value chain. What does that mean? We get a much closer valuation of gold because the cost will be realized instead of just the derivative suppression scheme, and you'll start to get more of a free gold. I don't think it's going to run all the way up to 10,000 right away, but you're going to get much more accurate pricing in gold and gold price is going to go up. And I'll show you something in the COT report, which indicates the bullion banks know this and the big players know this, and they're aligning their trades in the COMEX market. Stay tuned for that information. It follows that the proposed changes will make dealing much more expensive. All in all, the changes are retrograde, may render gold less relevant as an investable asset. Okay, what does that mean? It means for you and me, they don't want us holding it and the rules are gonna make it harder to hold it because it's gonna be much more expensive. They're gonna price gold more accurately and it's gonna be out of the hands of the average Joe American or Joe European, they're not gonna be able to afford it. That's, if you read between the lines, that's what they're saying. This is basically banker speak or finance speak for we're taking it out of the hands of the people as an investable asset. They're gonna hoard it at the central banks. Pay attention. If a physical gold broker's cost of financing his stock of coins and bars, for example, doubles, then it's likely they'll hold less inventory and charge higher premiums for the products, Norman explained. If financial markets become stressed and gold demand rise sharply, then the physical supply be greatly constrained. What have we been saying with the silver squeeze and what we think is going to happen to gold and the scarcity? They're admitting it on Market Watch in this article. You have just burned half your life bolts. In turn, that would make less gold less attractive as a safe haven. No, it would make it unobtainium because the average person can't afford it unless you buy it right freaking now. In a recent letter on the impact on the NSFR and the precious metals market, the LBMA World Gold Council said the proposals of the NSR failed to take into account the damaging effect the rules will have on precious metals clearing and settlement system, potentially undermining the system completely and on the increased cost of financing precious metals production. In other words, the LBMA knows it's going to make them obsolete uh, over time. I think it'll take some time, but it's taken the control out there. The World Gold Council, think about who that is. It's the mining companies and the exchanges and all them getting together. The, the BIS is taking control of gold from these people. 
It's taking control of the gold system. That's the point of Basel III. That's what I've been saying. Where's control going to? It's going to the BIS and the IMF, the central bankers. They're taking control of the gold market. That's the point of Basel III. It wasn't just to free gold. It was to move control of gold to the super bank that's being formed that I've been talking about for years. That is the purpose of Basel III revealed to you today and then some of the previous videos I've been doing. All right, more to talk about. That's why I'm going so fast here. You guys put the video on slower speed. When you rewatch it, it rewatches second and third time, you're going to pick up a lot of what I'm saying. The majority of precious metals held by the London Precious Metals Clearing Limited, LPMCL, which is created by the LBMA and operates a clearing and settlement for precious metals, is unallocated derivative metal. The vast majority of gold trading takes place in the London bullion market, said Gold's new newsletter, Brian London. The regulations are expected to take hold in the UK at the start of the new year, so the real impact won't be seen this month. Although it started to take place already uh, in Europe and the USA. All right, we're going to stop here and see you what you guys are saying in the chat. Are you following what I'm saying? Are you starting to get the connection between Basel III and the central bank digital currencies and the, the BIS and IMF becoming super entities taking control of that gold system away from the exchanges, the miners, and the retail market and the industrial market. They're going to take control of that market. Remember when I said the last two videos, I think Basel III is more about getting a free gold price than it is about moving control of gold to where? And I kept asking the question, is it the European bank? Is it China? No. China and the European bank are part of the bigger system of the BIS. It is the super bank, the BIS, that's taking control. That's now been revealed to us by several articles in Reuters and in MarketWatch. Now we know the plan. Now we know the plan. It has become apparent. Whew. All right. A lot to go there. I've got more to go. This is a bit of a marathon. We're going to keep pounding it. I want you guys to put your questions in the Super Chat. Super Chat helps support the program and they stick out to me and I can, I can get to them. We have about 400 users. I'm going to try to read some of the other questions. Uh, what you guys are asking. Uh, thank you so much, Rob, SO15, for saying loud and clear, Rob. Uh, I hope I'm making sense. I hope my predictions, you, you guys are seeing where they're coming true and you understand what I've been saying and why it helped be, become a subscriber. And I know that's a commercial, but I put the best stuff in the, in, in the subscriber and you guys have been subscribers. will know the value of that. All right, now we're getting to Hugo Salinas Price. Now we're going to start to make some connections between gold, China, Russia, the BIS, Basel III and the central bank digital currencies. Hugo Salinas Price is a billionaire Mexican investor. He has been talking about these markets for many, many years. And I've, I've come to trust what he said because a lot of what he said has become true and he's very well connected. He wrote here on the Mexican Civic Association Pro Silver, plata.com.mx, an article uh, on April 6, 2021. I'm sorry, on May 31st. And I'm just going to read the entire article because it's short. On April 6, 2021, the website Russia Today, that's RT, made an announcement, Putin poised to set a vision for future and dramatic speech in what allies say would be the world's most important political event. What was it according to Hugo and his contacts? It turned out that Putin did not set any vision for the future, what has been going on. In, in Hugo's opinion, there's only one explanation for this odd situation. Putin was threatening to restore gold backing for the Russian ruble and the Chinese yuan, the digital versions of them, and this scared the living daylights out of the BIS, the Bank for International Settlement, Switzerland, which caved to pressure from, from Russia and its ally, China. So in other words, why is China part of the BIS? The BIS has to bring them in because if they don't bring Russia and China in, then they back their currencies with gold. It will crash the, the, the system that they want to develop for the digital currencies and the BIS being at the center of that. So Russia and China flexed their weight and got pushed into the IMF and BIS. Remember months ago, when I was saying the IMF is no longer a Western institution and that China was a big part of that, when they got to be a part of the SDR, for example, this is the, the rise of China and their control in the world monetary system. They forced their way in. As a result of Putin's threat, uh, this made the BIS advise it was implementing the new rules to govern international banks regarding the presentation of amounts of gold which they hold, which are no longer to include unallocated gold. In other words, Basel III and NSFR. Ding, ding, ding. You got the connection there. It has been operations with unallocated gold. That's the London gold market. Hello. Think about which markets we're talking about with mythical gold, which, which has allowed the most important banks of Britain and the U.S. to control and suppress a market price for gold. Under the new rules, which would be presented in full on June 28th of this year, the price of gold will no longer be subject to manipulation on the part of the U.S. and the U.K. because the most important banks of these countries will no longer be able to count on unallocated. 
Russia and its ally China have thus canceled the power of the US and the UK to keep the price of gold in deep freeze for so many years. Will this liberate gold to an extent, but the BIS is now going to control it. You just have a different master in the gold market. That's what this means. Remember the last two videos I did. Let's go back to my website. The last two videos I did on Basel, I was talking about this is not just to set gold free. This is to move control. Where is it going? Where is it going? Okay. This is telling you, Hugo Salino Price is telling you, Reuters was telling you, Market Watch, all of these different resources are telling you it's moving to the BIS, the IMF, with China being a major world player. Now do you get the plan? Nobody knows how high the gold price will go after June 28th, but the higher it goes, the lower goes the international value of the dollar. Yes, it's the end of the fiat dollar system for those of you who thought it would never happen. Guess what? This is the next stage of the financial reset going on before your eyes and of other national currencies are linked to the dollar through the concentration of the reserves and dollars. Da -da. All the other currencies like the euro and the others that depend upon the dollar. It's weakening it. It's the movement of the financial system to a super supra national system instead of just an international system. The enormous U.S. imports of Chinese goods will have to fall to a trickle. And that reduction, the result of a return to economic reality, will decimate the standard living of Americans. This is what I have been warning about since I put out the book in 2010. I'm warning you, I'm warning you. And if you go back to my research and I said, world moves to cashless society. And I said, China prepares to alternative currency of the dollar. If you had read my book when it came out 11 years ago, everything that Hugo is saying and Market Watch is saying and Reuters is saying is now coming true. I started this prediction 11 to 12 years ago and did the central bank digital currency part of it three years ago in 2018. And then 2019, when I made all these predictions, they've all been True. Do you understand now what I'm saying? Now I'm going to make the connection to the COMEX. But before I do, I want to take a bit of a break and come back to the chat and see how you guys are doing. Thanks, Mikey Man Q, for the donation, silver and gold ratio. I think I've said one of my predictions was that silver would eventually trade at the price of gold because it's so important um, industrially and as a moneyed asset, but I don't think that's going to happen in the short run. I think they need cheap silver for the technocratic society and the space society we're moving into. So I think that ratio is going to stay somewhat widened for a while, although I think silver is going to quickly catch up to it. Thank you for the donation and the question. Other questions, guys, what do you have? Da, 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 da. Any other questions? I don't see any. I see a lot of comments. Good that we have comments going on. Um, I think we're in World War III. We just don't know it yet. Yes, from the standpoint of the non-military action, yes, we are. Usually when big financial resets like this come, we get into the military action. We'll see what happens there. Thank you, Michael, for doing a good moderator job. Uh, dealing with the trolls or the spammers. We appreciate that. I knew the trolls and spammers would be here today because I got them on Twitter right after I posted this, uh, that we're going to, what we're going to be talking about. Uh, Steve Ross Holmes says, other than gold in your hand, will gold in private vaults or kinesis be safe from the BIS and IMF? Really good question. It's kind of a loaded question because it depends on where. For Kinesis, yes, I do because it is owned by you with all of the rights there too. And if you're storing it at another depository, which gives you physical ownership, yes. Now, we have Gregor Gregerson from silverbullion.com.sg. He's going to be joining us on Monday talking about that very subject. So, Steve, I'm going to ask you to watch Monday. Gregor does an excellent job as the owner of one of these institutions in Singapore, of telling you the difference between what matters in terms of ownership and what doesn't. And that's the entire purpose of that discussion. So this is such a timely question, Steve, Ross. I'm so glad you asked it. Stay tuned for an even better answer Monday. Monday's premiere, we'll talk about that with Gregor from silverboeing.com.sg. He breaks down all the crap, all, the, all the, the misinformation about this and gives you the litmus test. And I think if you follow his guidelines, the same guidelines I recommend, you're going to be okay. But you got to do your research. You got to look at each one of these. You got to look at every one of these providers and go into the weeds. You cannot take whatever they say on their website or what the rep tells you. You have to go into the weeds to get that information. Dumb Money Media with another contribution. Thank you. That's why all my goals from Monet. I think jewelry would be a little bit harder to steal from, at least I hope. Now, that's interesting because Elizabeth Taylor, if you guys remember, this famous um, um, actress, in the United States, when she traveled, she wore $50,000 worth of gold jewelry. She walked right through the airport because there weren't any limitations at the time, and I still don't think there are, if I'm correct, of wearing jewelry. So she wore jewelry straight through, 
uh, the airport to travel. And that was her wearable, war wearable uh, wealth. And they asked her, why'd you do it? She said, well, because I can carry my wealth with me. So, you know, if she ever wasn't able to get cash from the bank or got stranded somewhere, she had wearable wealth. So yes, jewelry is a very special form of investment. It, it, there's a little bit higher of a premium, but it could get you out of some tough situations. And ask me another time to explain how people used it um, during various uh, other times, especially in the, the Asian countries to get out where they use uh, gold to buy their freedom. I'll, I'll tell that story on another one. I don't want to tell it here because we're already 36 minutes in. All right, we've got a little bit more to go, guys. Keep doing the super chats. I appreciate that. And we will answer your questions. So now the alignment of the bullion banks with what we think is going to happen with gold and silver as a result of Basel. Okay. And note that they're not exiting positions, but they're lessening them. So that's why I don't think gold's going to run to 10,000 right away because these positions aren't being completely exited. They're just being changed. So this is as of June 22nd, 2021 off the CFTC's website, you can see right here. And we're going to go down to silver first. You can see what is the big number in silver? The biggest change was the reduction right here of 8,200 shorts by the bullion banks. They're dumping shorts. Why are they dumping shorts? That was a huge amount. 88,000. Now they're at 48,000. They're at 50 something. That's what, one seventh, if I'm doing my math correctly, of their position in one week after being record short for how many years? They're dumping their shorts. Why are they dumping their, why did gold and silver get slammed down recently? To short cover so they could get rid of their shorts. Why? Because of Basel III and the reset into the central bank digital currencies. Ba doom, ba ding. The producer merchants did the same thing. Who was the other side of the trade? It was the managed money who, who dumped longs and went net short. Managed money absorbed all of this movement from the producer merchants and the swap dealers. Now into gold. This is gold. Same time frame, June 22nd, 2021. Exact same thing happened. The overall interest fell 26,000 contracts. The swap dealers dumped gold to the tune of almost 20,000 contracts, one-tenth of what they had in one week. Why? Because the change of the precious metals in the monetary system due to Basel III and the move to central bank digital currencies. That's why. Look at the COT report and you see the positioning. It is blatantly obvious. They're getting out of shorts because they expect the price to rise. Why? Because of the regulations. They're dumping their shorts. That's why the hammer down came this month and people got so discouraged. The hammer down had to come so they could short cover and get out of their short positions, give them to the idiot head fund managers who don't understand what's going on to take the other side of the trade. Who took the long, reduced their longs to match the reduction of shorts? The managed money, 28,000 contracts. The hedge funds are screwed now. They're screwed because now the prices are going to go up and they're gonna, they've lost all their longs and they basically transferred the money straight to the bullion banks and the producer merchants, okay? They understand what's going on. The players in this market understand what's going on. The financial interest just got screwed. We're gonna stop the share there and see if we have any more questions. Um, no more questions in the super chat. Do you guys understand what I'm saying? What's going on? If you have questions about this, enter it into the super chat. This is the putting together of everything I've been talking about for 10 years from the book to my website, to what I've written on Seeking Alpha, to what I put in the subscriber area of my website, to what I've been talking about on the videos. It's all coming together. That's why I got chills that I mentioned at the beginning of the video. I got chills this morning because I saw coming to fruition all these things at the same time. And it literally, I was like, oh my God. You know, when, when you write about these things and you talk about these, these things ahead of time, it, it's interesting to say the least. Um, but, but to actually see them all coalesce you know, in some cases, 10 years later at the same time, and to know that you're going and you're living through it uh, is amazing. It really is amazing. All right, had to take a drink there. Can we exit this evil plan, says David Veitch? Well, yeah, by owning gold and silver, because it has no counterparty risk and it allows true private ownership. If you're in the banking system and, and you're in other assets like that, derivative assets, you may be in trouble because you're now going to be dealing not in fiat currencies, but in central bank digital currencies. And that's the base of the value of all those derivative assets. So if all you own is derivative assets, when they change the money supply, you're now subject to that money supply. The only way to get out of it is gold and silver. And yes, tears for beers, I'm not messing around with. It's a no BS day here on Cowboys Metal live stream, And we're going to tell the truth and we're going to tell the whole truth and nothing but the truth to you guys today. 
I've got some news, I, guys. I'm. This has been an exhaustive report. I don't know if I'm going to get through all the news, but there's a couple of things I wanted to highlight. We may save some news for next week. There's a lot of stuff I want to talk about. There's a lot of stuff going on in the gold market that I wanted to talk about, but I have some announcements to make. I'm just going to talk about inflation and something that my friend Karen Von Hess put on his Twitter, uh, Dezo. He put up a chart from Fred. It's from the Fed's database. Share of total net worth held by the top 1%. And uh, his colorful language over here, but basically means the elite are winning. They've won through the last two recessions. They won through the pandemic, excuse me. Whether that's by design or not, I will leave to you, but they're winning and consolidating power and they are in these types of assets that we're trying to get you guys in, which is gold and silver. One more note from Reuters, Fed officials say temporary inflation surge may last longer than thought. They finally came out and said it's not transitory. Okay, it's not. And what have we been saying for the last four or five months when we saw the commodities complexes blow up? It wasn't just the recovery from the shutdowns. It was inflation rearing its ugly head. Here are from Reuters. A period of high inflation in the United States may last longer than anticipated. In other words, we just lied to you. Two U.S. Federal Reserve officials said on Wednesday, prompting one to pull forward his views and the central bank should start raising rates. Atlanta Fed President Rafael Bostic said with growing uh, surging to an estimated 7% this year, I'm sorry, growth surging, and inflation well above the Fed's 2% target. Yeah, duh, we're seeing four and 5% in April, May, and June, we're gonna see six, seven. He said he now expects interest rates will need to rise in late 2022. That's why they've been hinting at raising interest rates. They know the inflation genie is out of the bottle. Where are we? We're at the point in time which inflation is going to rage. They're going to tighten. It's gonna cause a deflationary collapse, at least a small one. And then if it causes a big one, they're going to have to bring out helicopter money. We're at the end of this fiat system. Why? Because we're going into where? The central bank currencies. They're letting the system die now. They couldn't let it die in 2008. In 2021, 22, 23, they can let it die. They're going to let inflation run to get us into the digital currencies. Digital currencies is a solution to the fiat system crashing. Listen to their language. Given the upside surprise and recent data points, I pulled forward my projection, Bostic said, placing among seven Fed policymakers that the central bank's meeting last week projected the overnight policy rate may need to lift from its current near zero level. The marked a decisive shift from the end of 2020 when 12 Fed policymakers felt that crisis level interest rate would need to remain, remain in place through 2024. Why? Because they have the system in place now to get into digital currencies. That's why they're letting it run. The difference in the meantime, now this is a bogus excuse, Vaccine have driven back the spread of the coronavirus and the economic reopening. Why did the shutdowns happen? Okay. Well, regardless of what you think about the virus, the shutdowns happened at a point in time to allow for the alignment of the central bank digital currencies in this system in place and the, the realization of Basel III and NSFR and the alignment of the gold market all happening at the same time. Now they're saying, well, we don't necessarily, you know, we've got the vaccines, we don't necessarily need to shut things down. Now they're going to let the inflation genie out. They're going to let it run. They're going to let it run. If you don't have your gold and silver, you better damn well get it because you're out of time. No BS today. I warned you guys, you're out of fucking time. Get your gold and silver. All right. That's all I have to say there. Thank you, Steve Ross Holmes, for another contribution. Been thinking of an exit from this for 20 years. Chris Marcus says he is going. Uh, Doug Casey thinks there's a no-brainer. Andrew Henderson makes it so clear. Have you considered leaving? If so, where? I'm not leaving because uh, Chris went down to Mexico. Some of them live in Argentina or wherever. I still see America as being safer, and I've researched this a lot. Now, if I had to leave, I guess we could. Uh, you know, it's always something in the back of your mind. But this is where I was born. I still think it's safer than many other places in the world. So I'm going to write it out here. If that changes, I'll let you know. If I leave, you're not going to see this background anymore. <laughs> and I'll tell you, don't worry. Done many media with one more contribution. Thank you. You're going to be pretty happy with the next bid. It's pretty epic. I appreciate you and community for all the love. Yes, uh, Done many media has his own YouTube channel. We'll promote that video when it comes out. I hear that Chris and I are going to be part of that video. So stay tuned to Dumb Money Media's social media and to YouTube for that new video out, I hear it's going to be pretty epic. And I hear uh, Chris may have a silver sword potentially or something along those lines. All right. One more thing I want to announce, guys. We have a very special announcement. Today is the first time I'm announcing it. Those who have been following me for some time know that I ran a conference last year called NAMS or the North American Monetary Metal Summit. That's a mouthful. So I'm going to change it just to Money Metal Summit. The Money Metal Summit 2021. 
We're going to run that August 19th and 20th, I believe, that Thursday and Friday. We're going to uh, run it uh, the same that we ran uh, the last one in January and this one last August. We're going to have a lot of guest speakers. We're going to have sponsors there to talk to you. We're going to be doing some giveaways of silver. Stay tuned. We're going to be giving away silver. We're going to do, do some uh, after hours events where we get together and we engage with you directly, where you can come on screen and talk to me face to face if you want. And we're going to do some private events. And I'm not going to tell you what those private events are now. We're getting those planned, but it's going to be a hell of a lot of fun. The tickets to get in will be free for you so we can have a big crowd, but we're going to have a good time. We're going to, it's going to be fun. Last year, I blew this out with two different days of events. Here are the speakers I had, Alex Newman, Andy Sheckman, Ann Bridges, Chris Marcus, Dave Prantzler, David Morgan, who is our keynote, Don Durrett, David Splett, Florian Gourmet, Greg James, James McDonald, Jason Cozens, Kai Hoffman, Jerry Huang, Ken Berry, Cam Kenneth Amaduri, Logan Kane, Lear Gantz, Nick Bereshev, Rafi Farber, myself, Rob Kirby, Stephen Swanton, Stuart Engler, and Ton Liu. We're going to have a lot of great speakers again this time. Some of them will be coming back. I'm going to ask Andy to come back. I'm going to ask Chris to come back. I'm going to ask David to come back. Dave Kranzler to come back. We're going to ask a lot of people to come back, and we're going to have some new speakers for you this time. Stay tuned for that. Our agenda last year, we had two and a half days. We had a lot of roundtables and different sessions. We're going to do the same thing, and it's all this time going to be live. Some of the content last year due to schedules was uh, pre-recorded, all of it live this time. We're going to have lots of exhibitors. You guys want to poke around in their booths and see what they've got going on. And we're going to have sponsors as well if you're interested in certain companies in the space. So pay attention to that. That is coming up August 19th and 20th. Free registration for you guys. I want all of you to come. I want it to be a blowout. We're going to do it again. It's going to be hella fun. August 19th to 20th. Uh, save the date, mark your calendars. One last thing I wanted to talk to you about. We're thinking about maybe doing a local meetup in North Texas near me. Uh, the Monetary Metal Summit will be virtual, so everybody around the world can join. This may be an in-person. If you're interested, go to my Twitter account and vote if you want a regular restaurant dinner meetup, a business day meet, a local resort with activities, or a weekend overnight stay. These two, the third one and the first one, the resort with activities and the dinner meetup are about even when you're considering I'm running this poll both on YouTube community and Twitter. Uh, one, I think restaurant dinner meetup is winning on YouTube community and resort with activities winning on, uh, winning on uh, Twitter. If you actually want to show up in North Texas and do something, go vote here, leave me a note, let me know. And we, if we have enough interest, we'll get something organized. It'll be a lot of fun guys. Thank you everybody for your contributions in the chat. If you have questions, ask them down there. Remember, uh, are a couple of signups that we have, the research intelligence team. We want you guys signing up and helping us out with the research so we can bring it to the entire community. And remember that we're also running a private investor thing. If you want to invest in the mining stocks or other companies in the space, you want to get signed up to that. We're going to bring you some special deals we're not going to announce to anybody else here in the future. So if you're investing on that end, outside the physical, go sign up for that. Will the gold price rising? Mark says, I think there's no question it will rise. The question is how much will the BIS let it rise? I don't know. No one knows. We're going to have to see what the mechanisms are for controlling that gold price or are. I think it's going to move away from the LBM and COMEX to something else. We don't know yet what that is. We're going to have to see. The movement feels like it's really moving now. UK Silverback says, I agree with you. People are flooding in the precious metals because I think they see what's going on. Uh, Mike Amar will ask, Rob, what are your thoughts on an IRA account? I've got one. Uh, rather, my wife has one. I think there's risk there, to be honest with you. Any of those qualified accounts, there's risk of them basically saying you can't have it when you need it and causing all sorts of problems. There's so much regulatory around that. If you've got one, I wouldn't necessarily liquidate it. Although, cause I'm not your financial advisor and I can't tell you. So don't, you know, disclaimer here, I'm not your financial advisor. You have to do your own research, all of that stuff. This is just for education and entertainment purposes only. And you take responsibility. But that being said, I liquidated all of my qualified accounts. I have no qualified accounts, no 401k, no pension, no IRA, none of it. Um, so do with that information as you wish. Belly Dance uh, says, thanks, Rob. Keep up the great work. Thank you very much. Um, any other last comments? 30 second summary of Basel three. Yeah, they're realigning gold. They're making it almost impossible for the average person to own it. They're going to let gold and silver prices rise and they're going to move control over to the BIS from the London and the COMEX. There's your 30 seconds. Um, David Vice says, sell your Bitcoin if you have any. Yeah, they're going to outlaw. I've been saying this forever. They're going to get rid of the private cryptos. And for those of you who think that they can't, eh -eh. You, you saw it on the stories I had today. I predicted that and I'm correct. And I'm sorry for the, the Bitcoiners and the crypto people 
you know, I apologize for bringing you the truth, but the mouthpieces in the media are telling you what they're doing. At some point, you got to wake up and realize if you want to trade and speculate, that's one thing. But holding as your long term wealth, be careful there. The, the, the powers that be don't want it. And there's a battle coming. Whether or not you win or they win, I don't know. But they're going to fight it. I'm telling you that is coming. All right. Thank you, everybody. I think we're going to end up uh, the stream this time. Whew, that was a long one, brought you good information. Serious, serious stuff going on. Like I said, I got tingly on this one, uh, but we see the plan in full now. And I've been waiting for that news and I saw it pop up this week. I wanted to bring it to you guys. Just note also that if you're a subscriber to the website, we will bring you additional information on this in the upcoming quarterly newsletter. I'm gonna do a whole blowout section on this for you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining. This is gonna end the live stream today. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Stay tuned Monday night. We have Gregor Gregerson on from silverbullion.com.sg talking about ownership of the metals. Do not miss that one. He gives you the real story on that. He, he does it better than anybody else I've seen in this space. Uh, I, I like his explanation. Please tune into that. Wednesday, we're going to have something very special for you guys that are into Kinesis. Stay tuned for the Wednesday and throughout the rest of the week, we will have more content for you as usual. Until next time, this is Rob Keats, Gold Silver Pros. Remember to like and subscribe here and sign up for the newsletter on the website. Have a good rest of Sunday.